zones? Yes, they are. Okay. I feel like an alien. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit of an alien feel here. <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> watercolor backgrounds that I use. Some of you are familiar with these, some of you may not be, but they're kind of fun, so. And I'm winging it today because I didn't have time to practice, so. except on what I painted earlier. <laughs> so, um, does anyone have a pencil? Lynette, could you find a pencil for me? Oh, you got one? Are they sharpened? Yep. Okay. Some of them are. Uh, this is good. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the easiest background in the world. And that is this one. Like that. There's no background. It's white. That's sometimes the most effective background you can find, depending on what your subject matter is. But anyway, it works good with the clock, so that's why I did that one. So that's easy. One down. <laughs> the second one I want to show you is, I'll hold it up here, this one, where you've got your bird or whatever you're doing as your subject matter, and then doing what they call either bokeh, bokeh, well, I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's an effect you get by taking away some of the paint in its little circles. And then I did a couple other things with that, and I'll show you that. So I think I'll start with this one. I'm not going to paint the bird. I'm just going to do the background. Okay? So maybe I'll sit this up here so you can see what I'm looking from, what I'm looking for, I should say. What do you call that technique? Um, I think it's, called, you know, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's V O K E H. Yeah, it's a, it's a photographic, you might know what that is. It's a photographic um, effect that sometimes you get with a photograph when you have little circles of light in there. Well, anyway, you do it on painting um, by removing some of the paint. Spider rug, on there, yes. So anyway, that's the one I'm doing right now. So uh, without the bird. So um, I'm going to wet my paper. This is 140 pound cold press paper that I'm using today, Arches. Always use good quality paper and you'll have a better result. So I'm just going to wet this paper a little bit. So I can get the colors to flow together. And then, um, let's see, what did I use there? Oh, let's see, yellow and red and green and whatever, the primary colors actually. So take some yellow, throw that in there somewhere. Your subject matter will be in the middle and you're painting around them is what you do. Your subject matter first, or you could do them together, but I like to get, you know, some of the subject, subject matter done first, and then you kind of have an idea of what you want to do with the background. So there's a yellow. And here's a red. And of course, when you have red and yellow together, you should be able to get some oranges in there. But I'm not painting the bird. Just the background. Okay. So I want some blues and greens in here. So, and you know, you decide what colors you want to use, what proportions. You know, you kind of let your subject matter dictate that. 
since since he has the same colors, I mean, I worked off of that. I used those colors there, so I decided to use those colors in the background for this particular painting. <coughs> And of course, if you um, notice here, if you mix yellow and red and blue together, you start getting a little bit of a little bit of a more brownish color. But I don't care today. <laughs> sometimes it's useful. Sometimes it isn't. But I don't mind today. Anyway, so I'm going to going to do that all the way around here, just so I can illustrate what I'm talking about here. I want to get a few more greens in here, so. Um, let me mix some and then maybe I can put a little more blue in there. carried away with this then you end up with a brown background and you don't want that. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Sometimes things are so much fun to do that you you go overboard and to you know you can't get back again. So. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. So this is pretty wet. And I'm just going to let the colors flow together and sit it down and let it dry. I might use a hair dryer in a minute if it doesn't dry fast enough, but I have some humidity in the air today, so it'll take a little longer to do. Always wipe the edges of a painting like this, especially if you're using really fluid paint, because anything that's left on the edge it will seep back into your painting, and then you'll get these little bloom things, you know, that you may or may not like. Um, the other thing you can do, and I'm not sure I did it with this one. No, I didn't. Never mind. I'll leave that alone. Okay, the second one that I want to show you, and we'll let that dry, and then I'll come back and finish all those other effects on it, um, is this one, where you've got colors around the subject. And I used a lot of blues here because I like blue, and he's got blue in, in the hair on himself. He's got some uh, of these colors here. So use the colors that you use in your subject, in your background, um, darker, lighter, or whatever. OK, so this looks pretty light because of the way that I printed it. But anyway, it should look more like that. And you need to use a lot of paint. So let me. Uh, Take this off of here. This one out. So for this one, um, I'm going to pretend that we have that bird on here. So I'm going to draw some here. Something like that. I just want something I can paint around. So just to show you what we're doing. Now, um, when you do a painting like this, I left some of it white because that just um, really makes the rest of it more striking. So it's kind of like a one-third, two-thirds sort of thing. Sort of thing. Hi, John. Um, so like two-thirds, I painted down to this far and then left the rest white. Or you could you could do one third up here and two thirds down here, but the thirds really are pleasing to the eye, so that's why I did it that way. So this one is kind of similar to what we did here, 
where you've got all your colors and they're blending together. Um, and then um, we'll use um, a palette knife to uh, scrape out some areas and that sort of thing. So um, anyway, so here's my bird. <laughs> I could have done a better job, but it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to use a different brush here. I'm going to use a different brush. So uh, let's see. So use this one here. All right, so again, you could wet your paper, but I think I'm not going to because I don't want it to get too light. I want to keep it a little darker. And because it's a heron and he will have, let me put some color in him, him, her, whatever. We'll have some blues in there. We'll have some, uh, one of these colors that I forgot to fill in my palette, but some of that stuff in there. You might have just a touch of red in there somewhere. And a little bit of uh, maybe turquoise, which I like to add. There, so those colors are in the bird. So then you decide kind of how you want to design your background. So I'm going to start by taking the blues, and there's a lot of blues to choose from in a palette. If you're a painter, um, I don't know if you can see this very well, but I have four different blues here, and I'm going to try to use all of them in the painting, one way or another. Um, I, I don't have an extensive palette because I don't really need it for what I do. Some people have these huge palettes with you know, 40 colors, but this is all I really need and all I really use. So, I'll keep it simple, you know. As I get older, everything's got to be simpler. <laughs> so, that's what I do. All right, so I'm going to take a lot of color. You know, we want um, a pretty, oops, pretty thick mi mixture. A little, little bit of um, water in there, but you want a pretty thick mixture to start with. And then we'll just work around the subject, whatever it is. And now you can use a little water and take one of your other blues, add it in there. Take some of that uh, yellowish color. I have to use a different one, I think. Here. Add that in there somewhere. Take some more of your blues. And you have to do this fairly fast because of the, the way that it dries. It dries quickly. And um, I did leave a little bit of white space up there, which sometimes is nice to be able to do. Leave a little lighter up there. Throw a little water. And um, the one that, the, the painter that I really love that I took inspiration for these paintings is Bev Joswick. And if you ever see her work, oh, she's just got these gorgeous backgrounds and she throws color and she, you know, she makes a mess, but it turns, turns out beautifully. Um, so, and she always says it's watercolor, use water. So we'll throw some water in there, it's starting to dry a little bit, and we'll get some of these little blooms and blossoms here, but that's a really good thing. Um, and then I'm going to mix a really dark color here. I'm going to make kind of a black with, uh, I don't have black on my palette because black is really, if you get a black paint, it's very, um, doesn't have a lot of light in it, it's very dull. So mix your black with a, a dark blue and uh, burnt sienna, or there are other mixtures you can use too. 
And I'm just going to put a little black in a few areas here just to make it a little bit more striking. Especially around, um, I'm not, we'll see right here. I did that there because it was light here and I wanted to just show that neckline there. So I, I put a little darkness in there. And when you put it in one place, you probably should throw it in somewhere else. And then, you know, tip it up and down and let the colors run and you know, put a little splashy on there to do something. Um, I'm just going to add just a little bit of red up here and make it purple. That's my favorite color, so I'll use that. That's why I put it there. Okay, now I'm getting down to this, almost this one-third area right in here. So I want to kind of make it drippy. I don't want to color in that whole portion. It'll be more effective if you, if you do it differently. So I'm going to throw a little paint here, a little water, to get it to run. Just make some drips in there. So let that run, and um, I don't know if it's easier to see it this way, like that, and just leave it. And let it run and leave it alone. Um, we've got a little bit of green in there. I'm going to throw some back in here. I'm actually going to take some of this dark and throw that in there. This is about as intuitive I, as I get with painting, is the backgrounds. So you kind of work on what it work off of what it is, and um, there. So paint. I end up with paint everywhere. It's on my walls. It's on my table. It's every, it might even be on you by the time we're done. <laughs> but I'm having fun. Hey, if you don't have fun, why do it? You know. Okay. Yeah, and then you might even take some just plain water and let it drip down. And maybe you don't want it on both sides. But anyway, the point is, you leave some space at the bottom that's white. And then if you want a little bit of shadow, you can come in there and put something in there when you're, when you're just about done, you know, and you've got your legs drawn and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, what else could I do? And then you want to quit before it gets too, too much, you know. I mean, it's so much fun that you want to just keep going. Uh, let's see what else? Oh, I know what I put in there. Let me do one more thing. I put a little burnt sienna because that has a little orange glow. Oops, got too much orange in there. Because um, I made a little bit of orange here on his legs, so I'd like to pick that up in the in the background somewhere. So I'm just gonna smash a little bit of that in there and just let it, you know, work its way through. So that when I put those legs in there, we'll have some of that in the background. All right, and one last dollop of this. And you can take very thick paint, put it on there thickly. This is almost out of the tube. And then um, throw a little water on there and let it run. So every one of them is going to be different. They're fun, they're quick, and I love painting like that. But now I'll show you something else you can do while it's wet. While it's wet, and I'm going to put a little more of that up there because it's kind of disappearing. Okay, while it's wet, take a um, palette knife, and if it's too wet, the paint will flow back into whatever you tried to drag out of it. If it's just about right, you will get, you know, this sort of thing where you can show kind of the um, evidence of trees or brushes, bushes or grasses or whatever you want. So um, I'm just going to do this. It's almost dry enough, if you can see that, but not quite.
palette knife. Yeah. And it doesn't wreck the paper? Um, I suppose if you do it too much in the same area it might, but no, not, not if it's good paper. That's why when you're painting, it's always better to have the best paper you can afford, you know. It's getting, getting very expensive, but... Um, And of course, I probably, and then I go too far with that because I put three right in a row, which I really didn't want, but there I have it, you know. But I can change that. I can push down on my palette knife and get maybe a, you know, a, a thicker kind of tree, you know, something that's a little bit not the same as the others. I'll just do a couple out here. Okay, and then, um, what else did I do? I'm trying to think what else I did up there. Uh, oh, I know. So after you get this, now I've got a halo around this head and I don't like that. It's still wet, so as long as your paper and your paint, as long as your paper is wet, you can keep putting paint on it. Um, as long as you monitor the amount of water you have in your brush, and it, it has to be, um, no more than what you've got on your paper. If you have more paint, more paint than, I'm sorry, try it again, more water than what you've got on your paper, and this is too dry, you'll end up with a bloom, which is okay if you want that. Sometimes it's very effective and you might want that. But, so you, it's one of the things with watercolor, you have to learn how to control the water in your brush and the water on the paper. But I don't like the halo that I'm getting there, so I'm going to come back in with some little thicker paint and uh, do something else here. It kind of goes up somewhere else so that it, so that it doesn't look like he's got a halo on his head. Still does kind of, but fix that. Don't be afraid to use paint. Anyway, keep working at it until um, you get to the point where you think you're done. <laughs> and then go back and really wreck it. This is what you do. But that's the fun part. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to let that dry just a little bit and then I might come back in and you can take some dark and make dark trees in there along with your lighter areas and because the, it was too wet this is kind of paint is coming back in. Um, yes, I believe I did. Uh, some of this was masked out a little bit but then you can use your palette knife too. You know, it's kind of whatever you want to do with that. So. Different ways to do the same thing, you know. I wish I had time to do the whole painting, but I don't. And so I'll just do it this way. Um, okay, now I know that, you know, it doesn't look like a painting painting but at least you can understand a little bit about what the background is um, yeah if it dries a little bit more I could you could use salt you know you could throw a little salt on it it could do that now but I don't have any um, and then wait for it to dry and then brush it off and it makes little cute little dots and stuff but another way to do that is to take a just a spray bottle and let me see if there's an area I can show that to you here. Um, it might be too wet yet, but let me try this area right up here. And just spritz it lightly. You have to be careful because you don't want a whole big shower of water. But just spritz it. And... Yeah, just a minute. I want to see if it's working here. No, so I can. Yeah, it, it's not working yet because it's too wet. So let me set that aside and I'll try to grab it and do that um, when it dries up a little bit. 
and I'll start on the third one while these two are drying. Um, and that's going to be this crow. And um, again, I'm not going to paint the crow, but I'll show you what I did with this, and that's very easy, very, very easy. Um, so here's my... my Okay, now this one is a little the wrong thing. Never mind, you know. Wrong paper. Okay, so for this crawl, I painted the crawl. Um, mostly, you know, the, the darks and then some of the lighter colors coming in. Um, if I can show you this, it looks better than the print. So, um, I'm going to show it this way. Anyway, so, uh, painted the crow mostly, um, so that he was there, and then I could do the background around him, and I wanted the reds and the yellows and the oranges there. So I put that down first. So I'll do that, and then I'll show you how how to get that other effect there. And some of you already know how to do that, but there's many ways to do the same thing. But in any case, um, all right. So let me do some yellow. You could wrap your paper too. It depends. I think today I won't because there's enough. Uh, moisture in the air. Let's say, let's say I'm going this direction. This is wet on dry this time, but you could wet your paper if you're a little slower painter and you're a little more meticulous than I am, you know? Sometimes I just like to throw it on there. Yes, I believe that would be better. But then you gotta have enough water in your brush too. And, and then, but you could wet your paper then let it dry back a little bit um, so that it um, doesn't have the shine, but it'll still have water in it, and then do this. And then you have a little more time to make it work, especially like when, when we're in Arizona and I paint down there, everything dries so fast that, you know, sometimes I have to wet the paper to do this, so. Anyway, I'll make some kind of a diagonal here because that's what I did with that one. And the, I'm using cadmium colors here, but if you don't want to use the cadmiums, which some people don't like to use those because they are toxic, but I don't eat it, so. <laughs> but anyway, so if you don't like those, there are other alternatives, like there's a, a Joe's, um, American Journey has a Joe's red, Joe's blue, Joe's yellow. I mean, those are, um, the red and the yellow would be an alternative, and there are others that you could use. So anyway, you want a really bright background for this particular crow. Obviously, you could do, use other colors, but you want something to uh, make him stand out when you, when you paint. Now, this time, I forgot that there's a crow in the middle, okay? So you would have your crow here in the middle. Um, you could paint him on top, probably, except that um, this is transparent watercolor, and even if you have heavy paint, you're still going to get some of the effects of whatever colors you have underneath it. So, and you don't want to use black, um, black paint. You want to use a blue and another, um, like a, a red or a, a brown color to make a black. It would be more pleasing to the eye. Okay, so I'm almost done with this. And then, Diane, is there a hair dryer? Where did Diane go? I got it. You got it, okay, thank you. I'm gonna use that so we can speed it up a little bit. 
Oh, I know what I want to do. I don't want this just, see, on this one, I've got a little orange up there, and I, I don't want it just red and yellow, so I'm going to bring, and then also this color is different than this color, and that's because I put a different red in it also, so I'm going to do that also. Just, I kind of forgot what I'd done there. Um, so I'll take like a, um, Permanent rose or ultra or uh, alizarin crimson, and add that to this red. I suppose you could mix them together, but it's better to mix them on the paper and do it that way. Throw it in there while it's wet, even if it's not a flat wash. Just throw it in there. That one's even darker than that, so I'm going to. Uh, Make a little darker red here, a little bit of burnt sienna, throw that in there. There. So we've got that, a little bit darker. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that red, but I think I'll use a um, permanent rose because it's more, um, it's more, uh, it doesn't have any blue in it, let me put it that way. I get a little bit of orange in there. Now my paper is starting to dry here, so I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow in there just so that I don't get blooms up there. Keep working at it and see what you get. Dry that with the hair dryer so I can show you that one and finish it up. I, I do that a lot. It, and then sometimes I don't want to, so I put a piece of tape down, yeah. stick it down, yeah. because um, sometimes you just want to move that paper around, you know. And you can do that while it's on the board, yeah. but sometimes you just want to wave it in the air and, you know, yeah. <laughs> be creative with it and just do whatever. So it's up to you how you do that. Um, and a bigger painting, sometimes when you do these techniques like this one, will buckle, yeah. you know, so when you, well, when they dry, a lot of the buckles come out, but you can also iron them on the back. And most of you that do watercolor know that, but um, you can take a dry watercolor painting because it's 100% cotton paper. And you can iron it, uh, spray a little bit of water on the back, backside, put a cloth, or, I do a cloth over it, but you could do it just with the iron. And um, iron it with a hot iron and it will make it nice and flat. So then, the final part of this, this is the way I did it, you could do it another way, but is to take some saran wrap, like this, and bunch it up, and um, I'm gonna make a, 
some some colors here. Um, maybe I'll get rid of some of this on the palette first. I'm painting faster than I normally do. <laughs> it's it's kind of that kind of day. <laughs> My nerves are kind of uh, fried today. But anyway. uh, I'm going to get some clean water here. And then we'll go back and finish these, these other two pieces here. Okay, so, um, what kind of thing is this? I want some yellow, so I'm going to throw some yellow, really thick yellow on my palette. You know, pretty thick paint. You don't want a watery mix. You want a little water, but um, you want pretty thick paint. It might not even be thick enough, but we'll, we'll try it. Um, put a little bit more of that in there. So we'll, we'll start with that. Sometimes I just take that and put it on this rolled up piece of saran wrap. Or I dip it in. I've got some blue on here so we don't know what we're going to get. But I paint, paint the bird first, the background next, and then come in around the bird and maybe take a little bit of these marks into the bird so it's not dark sitting out there by itself, you know, like an outline. And then um, just start working with this. And it puts, can you see that? It puts some color on bring it up here. Um, I left a little bit that I didn't do that with, or just did a little bit. So you can get carried away with this too. <laughs> because all these things are fun to do. So I'll put that in there. Okay, so now I want some other color. And um, I don't want to mix it with that. I want to look at yellow, so I'm going to do another piece of stone. Okay. 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 Whatever, and um, I'm going to do. Um, what did I do on that? Oh, some some really dark. Okay, I'll, I'll try this because there's black. Because it's a dark crow, black crow. I'm going to um, use some of the dark mixture that I have. Put that in there. Whatever color is used in your crow, and by the way, you don't paint a crow with just black. You want other colors in there. This has got some red and some blues in it uh, because it makes it more interesting. And, and actually, when the light is hitting a crow, you would do see those colors too. So you want some of those in there. And when you put those in there, you want to use those same colors in your background. It makes it more cohesive. Okay, get out of there. Mixing up a little bit more dark here. I get really messy. <laughs> there. A little bit of that. There we go. And then what did I use? Oh, I used some blue in there, so I'm going to use some blue. But in any case, I think you can understand what, what you do. And um, if you you know, don't scrunch this quite as much as I did. Oh my goodness, I'm a mess. Anyway, then you can get bigger marks, which I can't do right at the moment, but anyway, that's what you do. Press down a little harder and sometimes you'll get a darker mark. Okay, so that's what you do with that. And then I'm gonna do one last color, and that is uh, the blue. And I just have enough of that left. Hmm. That 
was, um, I think that color was, um, hmm. it wasn't cobalt, it was uh, whatever this other turquoise is, I'll put turquoise in there, because I like that color. That adds some brightness, picks up the colors of the crow into your painting. Anyway, that's what you do with that one. So go home and paint a crow. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll show you how to finish these other ones then. Um, okay, this one is, is dried up a little bit, but not completely. And I was just going to show you when you... you well, there's two different ways to do it. Maybe I'll do two things on here. One is, I'm just going to spritz this area up here and hope it does what I want it to do. I did too much. It'll, it'll give you kind of a salt effect without the salt. If you just spray it into a damp area. And this one, I did too much. I'm just going to take some of that off. In any case, it, it's what you want, you know, you want this to be dry enough and have a spritz bottle that doesn't spray out so much at one time, so you only have a few drips. And the other thing you can do is, um, in a dry area, dry this up a little bit. So now I'm going to take my brush because this spritz bottle has too much water coming out. I'm just going to put a little bit of spatter on uh, with my just plain water. Let it sit for just a little bit and then you can rub that off. There. That's what I wanted to see. So it's almost like having a little salt on there without using salt. So if you forget to use salt when it's really wet, and you really want a little bit of that effect, just spritz it with a little bit or throw a little water on it, wait for a couple, a few seconds, and then wipe it off. And then lastly, you can add, you can add things to this. And one thing I would do is maybe uh, take a a brush and just make some darker, you know, um, delineate some of these trees a little bit, maybe. Or you could you know, put some up there like that so that they're, instead of scraped out, you know, you can have them coming down to the earth to the rest of your painting too, you know, anything like that to to make more interest in there. And of course you could use a little white paint if you wanted to or if you're you know if you wanted to do that. Anyway, so that didn't turn out as nicely as this one, but I think you you kinda of understand how you get there. So that's that one. And finally this one, we're going to dry it up a little bit more. I hadn't stuck my hand into my palette, it would have been okay, but 
there I did it. Okay, so um, so the Boca Boki effect, whatever that is called, um, there are several ways to do it, but um, I have a stencil, and my husband was kind enough to bring this to me this morning because the one that I bought to use before, I believe I left it in Arizona, and I need it for this, but you can do this a, a couple different ways. But I like this because it has many different sizes of circles. So um, you have your subject matter here. Let's see. I could put something in there. You know, let's say it's right in here. Whatever it is. In this case, it's a black blob. That's okay. So you want to... Um, take off some of the paint. And um, of course I forgot the thing that I take the paint off with, but I'll use the Kleenex, that'll work too. Sometimes I use, a, um, what really works well is a Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean Scrubber and um, just cut a small square and that's really nice for taking the paint off. So, and I'm just going to wet my Kleenex here. I think I can make it work. And start putting a few, taking off some of the paint. That one I need a little bit more. I'll use this because that is not strong enough. A little sponge works better. This is not working like I wanted it to. But in any case, you scrub off a few circles. Diane, do you have a do you have a um, Mr. Clean? No. Okay. Where's that sponge when you need it? Okay. But you can see it's starting to you know you take those. Where did I, there it is. They, they're kind of subtle, and you go around, and I like to do different sizes, some together, some separate. The other thing is, if you have more paint on your paper, it will probably look more striking, but as you go through, you take some of the paint off. And also with your subject matter, um, don't take it off the subject, but around the subject matter. That's too wet still. You can have some of that. Um, small circles, big circles, whatever you decide to do. You can get carried away with this, of course, because <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and I think you understand what I'm doing here. One of those little sponges works beautifully. Oh no, the Mr. Clean is, if you have good paper, you know, really cheap paper, maybe. No, because then the spray gets everywhere and you don't want that. For, yeah, I just dip the sponge in and, and uh, squeeze out the water and then use it that way. But this time I had to use, I had to improvise. <laughs> so. In any case, um, the other way you can do this if you don't have one of these, and it's not quite as exacting, let me see what that looks when I do this one. There. Anyway, we're getting, we're getting some of those all around. And in the one that I did um, here, it's on the wall. You know, it, it's a subtle effect, but it's kind of nice, you know. Did you put it under the camera? Yes. And then okay. what about those lines? I'll show you that just now. 
<laughs> In any case, okay, so now you've got some of your circles and uh, you can get carried away, but, and, and the brighter your colors are in the background, you know, the, the more striking it will be. So you have to kind of determine what you want there. So then for all these little marks here, I use my uh, very expensive, um, if I can find it, a very, very expensive tool. Piece of 300 pound watercolor paper. And, uh, I mean, the whole sheet is pretty expensive, but a little piece is nothing. You don't have to use that particular thing. You could, I don't know, find some other way to do this. That's just what I like, so that's what I do. And then I mix up that really dark again with um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. And get a nice, dark, thick mixture. Not too much water in it. I want it to stay pretty dark. There we go. Okay, so this is a pretty dark mixture. There. Here. Take your card. Now this one this one has a couple of different size edges on it. So you can make different size marks. So then I dip it in the watercolor, and I do this. Some are darker, some are lighter. Twist and turn. And again, you know, you have to know when to quit. Hey, I like doing it, it's fun. You know, I wanted to do a, um, a little bit of a, um, what do you call it, a, the wax process that she did this morning. What do you call that again? Batik. Batik. I wanted to have that, a little bit of that look, but I don't want to do that. You know, I just don't want to do the wax and all that. So I thought, well, how could I, how could I make it look a little bit like that? And so I just did the card and, um, and you know, some of these areas, you know, like like here, because it's watercolor paper, you're not getting a straight line all the way through. You're getting some broken effect. And I like that. Anyway, okay, that's probably about enough. Probably too much, actually. And then lastly, take a toothbrush, wet it, dry it off a little bit. Take some of that same mixture. Make sure there's not too much on there. And then just go through and do a little bit of, let's bring it up here a little bit. Just a little bit of spatter. And again, you can go overboard, but you know, a little bit goes a long ways. There. So that's what you do with that one. I like that the best. So there you have it. I think I did them all. Thank you for being patient through all my messes.